life is too bloody short. You just never know when your time is going to be up, when your family's time is going to be up. You can't control much in life, to be honest. Having the people around you supporting you with that laser sharp focus means you can actually be freed up to make sure that you're actually taking time off, to make sure that you are doing the things that, that feed your soul. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I'm your host, Deborah Chantry Taylor, and I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs lead their ideal lives by creating better businesses. I'm a certified EOS implementer, an FBA accredited family business advisor, and a business owner myself with several business interests. I spend all of my time working with business owners and their leadership teams to really help them create that better business. So taking it from a good business to a great business to ensure that they can then create a better life. I wanted to share a little bit of my reasoning for doing that today. So today is quite a special day as this podcast gets released. Tomorrow would have been my mum's birthday. Sadly, my mum passed away several years ago. And in fact, for those of you who don't know, I actually lost all of my family in a very short space of five years. So first my brother passed away, then my mum, then my dad. And I want to just honour all of my family today and just share a little bit of why, whilst that happening has been really challenging and really difficult for me, it's also been able to give me a completely different perspective about life. So I want to share a little bit of that. And without going into huge amounts of detail, I guess I wanted to share my story as an entrepreneur. I have been running businesses since I was 13 years old, but really being paid for it since I was about 23 years old. And I've always had a passion for making sure that businesses run really well, that the teams in the business are all on the same page. I just, I don't know, there's something in my blood about running businesses. But there was a point in my life where literally business was everything. Now, don't get me wrong, I love business. And so there, you know, therefore, I don't have a nine to five mentality. I don't ever switch off. I'm always thinking about the various businesses that I run and the businesses I work with. So I'm not pretending to be somebody who has got it all sorted out and who has a beautiful life where they're doing nothing. I don't know that would be a beautiful life for me. I enjoy business so much. It becomes everything that I do do. But what I did want to share was that there was a time when it was all consuming where I would be awake and at 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning worrying about the things, some things I couldn't control, some things I could have done better. I would worry about how I was going to pay the bills, how I would take the next step, where the business was headed, and it became more consuming. And in that time, I was not sleeping well. I was definitely working ridiculously long hours. I wasn't really building a team around me that could, I could enable myself to let go. And it was really the, the death of my brother that kind of changed things dramatically for me. So my brother was younger than me when he passed away. He was only 43, 44 years old, um, and he was two and a half years my junior. So it was a bit of a shock. It was certainly something we hadn't expected. Uh, it was all very quick, very unexpected, very tragic. I'll never forget the call from my parents on that day when he passed away. It's sort of one of those haunting calls that I think will stay with me forever. But anyway, it was, it is what it is. We can't, we obviously can't change the past, but it really gave me a wake up call because what I realized at that time was that everything I was doing was about the business. I didn't really have time for other things. I certainly hadn't spent the amount of time I would have liked to have done with my family. And, you know, we go into business thinking that business will give us the freedom, the opportunity to actually spend more time doing the things we love, spend more time with our family. But often what we find is we get into this vortex of business and, and I don't know about you but I feel like I just couldn't escape that and everything was all consuming it was overwhelming I, I felt like I had no control I felt like everything was was just challenging everything was always challenging and so when Marcus passed away it was a bit of a wake-up call I don't suppose I necessarily wanted to but I obviously chose to to leave the business and go back to Australia and spend time with my family with my, my beautiful niece and my beautiful sister-in-law and my mum and my dad and and we all kind of helped each other through that difficult time. And, you know, I came back to the business with a slightly different perspective on life, realizing that life was pretty short and you couldn't be doing things that, you know, you didn't enjoy, that you couldn't be building a business that kept you so enslaved, so handcuffed to the business 
And I started changing some of the ways that I did things. Um, but it wasn't long after that my brother passed away that I got the news that my mother um, had terminal cancer. And mum had already had cancer before. She had breast cancer. She went through treatment. She got over that. She'd had adrenal cancer. She got over that. She was on dialysis because she'd lost one of her kidneys and one of them wasn't working particularly well. And so was doing dialysis three times a week and life was, was pretty tough for her. And so I remember getting the call from her and my dad and they said, look, mum's been diagnosed with, with terminal cancer. At this point, we think she's going to go ahead and have chemotherapy and radiotherapy and see what she can do. And it was like, okay, that's not ideal, but she's been through it before. I thought she'd get through it again. And then I got another phone call where, where mum and dad sort of said, hey, look, we've talked about it and mum doesn't think she can actually go ahead with this. Doesn't want to go through all that stuff again. Don't think she can cope with it. I think the, the death of my brother really, really affected her. He was, he was definitely her favorite. Um, we were very, very close friends, mum and I. So there was definitely, there was no, there's no animosity there at all, but he was there. He was living in Australia with them. He would visit them. He was a, a stay at home dad. He had time to visit them and, and he, he genuinely, I loved them with his entire heart and did everything for them. So I understood that losing him was, was pretty major for my mum. So we had the conversation and we talked about what she could do. And because she was on dialysis, it meant that she could actually come off dialysis and her body would just naturally shut down over a period of time and, and she would pass away. And we, we had that conversation. We agreed that was what she wanted to do. We supported her in what she wanted to do. I don't think it was an easy decision for my mum or and certainly not for my dad and I, who, who did not want mum to, to leave selfishly. I wanted my mum here for as long as I could have her, but I understood that actually it was the best thing for her to do. Um, she, she, couldn't, she couldn't continue on, and, and I completely got that. So fortunately, I was able to leave the business again. Um, by this point, I had people in place who were running the business really well, and I could actually leave it, leave it with them to run. So I went home, and I spent time with my family and with my mum and my dad. That was all sort of left now, and we spent time just Reminiscing about, you know, the stuff that we had done throughout our lives. Mum and I used to do a lot of things together. We went backpacking around Australia together. We had done a whole a whole series of things that I'm, I feel very grateful, very fortunate to have done. We had not, in our earlier part of our life, I would say that we weren't particularly good friends. We, we clashed a lot. I think we were very similar. And so I think there was a lot of clashing in, the, in my very early stages. But as I got older, I appreciated mum for who she really was. And we just had an amazing relationship. So. I've got to go home, spend some time with them before mum went into hospital and then we went into hospital with her and as she came to the dialysis, we spent time with her. In the beginning, she was still mentally there, but there was, the body was shutting down physically and then over time, she just got worse and worse and eventually she was not really there mentally, I don't think. Maybe her body was still going, but certainly she couldn't talk anymore. And then I was with her in the room when she actually passed away. And that was really tough because that was my mum. And I love my mum dearly, just as I love my brother dearly. And um, much as I love my dad, we didn't have quite the same relationship. It was a bit more tumultuous, a bit more disagreement in terms of the way that we viewed life and things. But nevertheless, it was good that I got to spend time with her. It was, it was heartbreaking. I went back into the business. I made it really clear, a really clear priority that I was not ever going to let the business take me away from time that I should be spending with my family, with my friends. And it was at about that time that actually running the event center in Auckland, EOS came into my life. And so EOS actually used our event center to launch into New Zealand. They booked the space and I remember seeing their name and thinking I was part of the entrepreneurs organization at the time. And our business was called The Common, the Entrepreneurs Playground. So all these things, entrepreneurial, were kind of coming out. EOS was the entrepreneurial operating system. So, of course, it piqued my interest. And I had a look at what they were doing. I read a couple of the books, and I realized that the stuff that they were doing was just so great in terms of helping entrepreneurs not only create a better business, but actually lead a better life. And whilst a lot of the tools that they used in EOS were not rocket science, they were nothing new, they were things I'd been doing almost naturally for many, many years in my business, it gave a framework and more importantly, it gave a pathway for how you could build a business that would actually allow you to free yourself up. And so 
when they talked about the EOS life, they talked about the fact that you, you should be doing what you love with people you love, making a huge difference in the world, being compensated appropriately for what you do whilst having time to pursue other passions. And I suppose at that point in my life with mum just having passed away, with my brother having passed away beforehand, I realised how important that actually was for, for me. I mean, I, I wanted to, I love business. I'm never going to not love business. I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be somebody who doesn't stop thinking about it, but I wanted to make sure that I was only working with people I love, doing the stuff that I love, and that I did have that time to pursue other passions. So I jumped on board. I jumped into the EOS training. That was five years ago in December. It's so hard to believe that that time has passed so quickly. And I started doing EOS. I still continue to run business and still continue to do other things. But EOS became part of the cornerstone of the stuff that I was doing. It helped me. I would always been involved with helping other businesses. So when I was working at the Ice House, I would support businesses there in the startup space and the established space in the market validation space. I did a lot of work business mentors. So no matter what I was doing, I was still always helping other businesses. And I guess EOS just gave me that framework to actually do that. It's a really simple, pragmatic set of tools that can create a better business that you can have that better life to do the things that you really love. So I suppose I feel like I'm rambling a wee bit here, but I wanted to share a little bit of what I, what I do and why I do it. So what I do is I just help businesses to create better business, taking a business from good. So you may have a good business that you feel is, you know, it, it's certainly not, there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't feel like it's giving you everything you want and need. It might not be giving you enough profit. You may not feel like you have true control. You may feel like you've got lots of people issues going on. So we put in place a people management system, a people energy system that actually enables you to put, bring everybody on that journey with you, get them on the same page, know how they contribute to the success of the business and having a plan in place they can actually execute on, as well as really all fighting together for the greater good of that business. And with that framework, what that does is it frees you up as the business owner, as the business leaders to get back to doing what you really love in the business. You know, I'm really proud to say that the work that I do now in EOS, but also in our other businesses is work that I genuinely love, that I'm great at, that I really want to do. I get to choose who I work with, you know, from a staffing point of view, from a team point of view, from a client point of view. And that is all really about, you know, doing what you love with people you love and having the framework just means that you are always really laser sharp, clear on what you should be doing when you need to focus your energy and that and having the people around you supporting you with that laser sharp focus means you can actually be freed up to make sure that you're actually taking time off to make sure that you are doing the things that, that feed your soul. And so, you know, it's, it comes that my why, why that's what I do, but why do I do it? I do it because I, I can't turn back the clock. I can't, I can't make my brother come back. I can't make my mum come back. That, that's, that's just part of what happens in life. And of course, dad passed away just recently as well, a couple of years ago now, but you know, not long after they passed away. You can't turn back the clock. You can't change what has happened, but it does mean that for me, that was the catalyst to go, is this the right thing in life? Am I doing the right thing? Should, is there more I could be doing? How do I make more time? Life is too short. You'll hear me say that a lot. You know, honestly, life is too bloody short. You just never know when your time is going to be up, when your family's time is going to be up. You know, you just, you can't control much in life, to be honest. But at least with, with EOS, I can help people to have more control in their business, which means they then have the freedom to do more of the things that they love. So this is just a real, very short episode, a tribute to my mum, to my brother, to my dad, um, all who played a really important part in my life, all of whom I miss desperately. But, you know, despite what happened, they have been able to be a catalyst for me to think about what is important and think about what, what we do need to do and how we can still make a huge difference in the world, but still have time to actually spend time with our family. I'm very grateful that, you know, these days I've got Steve, I've got our fur babies. We, we have a, a pretty special life where I still, you know, do a lot of business. I'm still here, here on the weekend recording a podcast, so that, that doesn't change, but I still make sure that we have time for other things. And that means that when I do travel with work, I often ask Steve to come with me. When I do, when we go away, we make sure that we, well, the whole year gets planned out. We make sure we've got at least five weekends, long weekends 
every year where we're going away and spending time together. This weekend on the long weekend, the stop weekend just gone, we sat down and we planned out our holidays for the year and what we're going to be doing. We planned out our next year so we know exactly what next year looks like. And I'm really happy to say that, you know, this year I am taking three and a half weeks off at Christmas. We are taking three and a half weeks off at Christmas. We are going to Europe where we're going to catch up with my uncle and auntie and my cousins in Germany. I'm going to catch up with my pen friends that I have had since I was 11 or 12 years old. So I've got a pen friend in France. I've got a pen friend in Denmark. I've got a pen friend in Germany and a pen friend in East Germany. And we're actually going to go around and visit all of those, those pen friends while we're over in Europe and spend some time, albeit short periods of time, but time actually catching up with them, catching up with their families, really spending some quality time doing what we love, which is we love our family, our friends, we love traveling, we love food, we love wine, we love uh, photography. It's going to be an amazing time of year because obviously Christmas is, we've got the Christmas markets in Germany, which will be for Christmas. We're going to have hopefully snow in places like Denmark and I mean, the scenery in Europe is just beautiful any time of year, but I think in Christmas and, and, and winter time, it's particularly special. So very much looking forward to that. That will be three weeks on the ground, three and a half weeks total in travel. And it's something that we've been meaning to do for a while. So it's good that we've actually finally planned that out. Thinking of next year, we've been talking about going to South Africa next year. So some of my family are still in South Africa. That's my father's brother his wife. And so we're looking at going over there. Again, it's been on our bucket list for some time in terms of being able to do a, what do you call those, the, the game park reserve type things and just, just seeing South Africa. I mean, I, I've got a, an assistant dash who's over in South Africa. I've got friends over from South Africa. But we've never actually been there. So that is on the plan for next year. And of course, just in terms of business side of things, you know, the EOS practice has been almost five years. So five years in December, I'll receive my, my plaque to say that I've been an EOS implementer for five years. We are now helping um, several hundred people every year with EOS, which is part of my goals. I want to get to a thousand, but a couple of hundred will do to start off with. We're slowly getting there. We have got the two new businesses that are underway. So we have integrated executives, which is very much about providing fractional executives for business owners, whether that be a fractional integrator, a fractional CMO, a fractional CFO, whatever the business actually needs. So being able to help people with having those fractional high level executives that you need in the business where you may not need them full time. And then the ultimate goal for that business is to become a venture capitalist firm where we can actually invest in businesses that uh, need help and who are running on EOS so that we can actually help to grow those businesses. So we're actually impacting more than just the stuff that we do with EOS, but a, a greater impact on those businesses. And then there's a little AI tech business I have a small shareholding in, which is really about, you know, how do we use AI to improve people's lives and improve security and just generally make the world a better place. So exciting times, unfortunately, comes from a lot of adversity and a lot of pain in the previous years. But I, as I said, I'm grateful to, to my mum, to my brother, to my father, to my family for being there for me when they were here, for what they did for me in terms of helping me get to where I am. And, you know, I didn't want to go, I didn't want this day, my mum's birthday to go unrecognized. So I thought I'd just share that with you. Um, if you think I can help you in any way, that is what I'm, I always say I'm here to help. I truly mean it. If you, if you think I can help in any way, drop me an email, deborah at businessaction.co.nz or even send me a text message 021-332-007 or in Australia 0420-855-405. I'm really happy to, to help in any way that I can. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to do that. So please, if I can help in any way to help you create a better business, which helps you have a better life, I would love to do that. Happy birthday, mum, for tomorrow. And I look forward to speaking with you all again next week. Thank you.